and uh, we have staff there and everything. And they, uh, they, we have walking tours. We've even had uh, tours on horseback up in uh, Van Corken Park. And uh, I even took a group of uh, canoeists out last year. They had canoes, I had my kayak, and we took them out from Orchard Beach, and we took them around Rodman's Neck, and we stopped at some island for lunch. And uh, we do kind of oddball things. You know? yeah. So anybody, I mean, is uh, all ages, and uh, we, we welcome everyone. Oh, Pope Park, uh, I'll be with you in a moment, sir. Uh, Pope Park, uh, that was, uh, the, the Pope Cottage was originally on the other side of the street. And uh, when they were widening Valentine Avenue, they were even going to demolish it. And there was a group called the, uh, uh, something like the Poets, Poets and Peasants, of, uh, Poets and something, of, uh, of the Bronx. And uh, they got wind of it and uh, uh, stopped it in time to transfer it over to the other side. And that's under our, uh, uh, under our supervision, and we have a caretaker there. And uh, we do have uh, uh, little 15-minute shows that they put on. Uh, I think it's about 15 or 20 people can sit in the room and watch it They're upstairs. And uh, about three years ago, anybody remember Mark Hellinger? He was a uh, columnist. Well, uh, I think it's his niece. Uh, she's quite wealthy, and she lives downtown. And uh, she got very tired of people disparaging the Bronx. So she chartered, she chartered a bus and she invited about 40 women from the UN. They were mostly uh, wives of the secretaries or uh, legal secretaries. And uh, she wanted to give a tour of the Bronx. So uh, she asked me if I would get, be the speaker. And so besides myself, there was just the, uh, the driver and all of us were women. And uh, some came in their saris, and, uh, but most of them came in their ordinary clothes. All spoke beautiful English, and had, only one had ever been in the Bronx. So uh, they, we went up the East River Drive, and we, we came into the, the concourse, and uh, we stopped on 49th, they saw the mules there, then we went over, went around the Yankee Stadium. But I'll tell you a funny thing, they all knew about Alexander's. <laughs> and they all wanted, they all wanted to know if we were going to make a stop there. And I, I said, gee, uh, I'm sorry ladies, but I can show you it, and if you want to come back, feel free, you can come up in the Jerome of the line, and uh, go there. Well anyway, we went to Polk Cottage, and uh, uh, Fordham University, yeah, Fordham University, we ended up at Botanical Gardens, we had lunch, and the, the women were amazed. Uh, and I said, well, I'm showing you the nicest part. I said, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time. I'd like to show you City Island and Riverdale if you want to see something even nicer. Well, they wanted to see Charlotte Street because that was what they had heard about. So I said, well, on the way back on the Buckman Boulevard, I said, we'll skim by it and you'll see it. And uh, so they were very happy about it, but they certainly revised their thoughts about the Bronx because uh, it seems a... Uh, it seems my fate, I take a lot of trips, and uh, every place I get to, it seems I, they had just been showing for the Apache. <laughs> and everybody knows it, and when they hear I'm from the Bronx, of course I don't make any bones about it, he asked me where I'm from, New York, and then they said, do you ever see the Bronx? And I said, oh, I live there, born there. You know? And uh, some of them are quite amazed, they, uh, they look at you like it's so, it, it so should be cut or something. But I'm getting used to it. And, uh, and one thing about it, we always say the Bronx. Well, in Spanish they say El Bronx, and in German they say Der Bronx. Yeah, they use the article. I have noticed that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I, 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 it's, uh, it's an education going out and then seeing the Bronx as other people see it. And uh, I love to get them here, because last year at the Sturgeon Parade, there was two young fellows when I heard I was from the Bronx, they said, oh, we, we, we just came back from there. I said, well, what were you doing there? He says, well, we had a, we had a choice of going to, uh, taking a trip to Chinatown, but we didn't want to go. We, we, we got in a taxi, and we went up to, to see the Bronx. And they, and they were like, they felt very daring about it. I said, what did you see? <laughs> well, we, we just saw, uh, you know, a lot of old buildings. So one of the older Germans said to me, he says, I wouldn't go up there. He says, I've seen enough wrecked buildings, you know, for World War II. What do I want to see that? So uh, you get all kinds of opinions on it.
So excuse me, sir. You you want to question this this man? And, yeah. Oh yes. Statue right. of the Civil War drummer boy that used to be in Pardon? that used to be in uh, Bronx Boulevard, just north of Duncombe Place, uh, near the uh, near the Historical Society building. Oh, he is the drummer boy. He's a he's a Civil War uh, statue. He's about five foot tall. And uh, there's a couple of stories, but I. I've got, I, I think I got the whole story on it. Uh, there was a, uh, there was a, a Civil War uh, post called the Oliver Tilden Post, and uh, they had a, they have a plot up in the north, the north end of Woodlawn Cemetery, and they commissioned some sculptor to make the statue of a uh, Civil War veteran uh, at rest. I think they call it. And he, uh, when it was when it was delivered. The visor and the big toe, uh, the toe of the boot was broken off and they refused the uh, payment and, and, uh, to, to receive it. Well, uh, I don't, uh, I remember, I, usually I can think of the man's name, Italian name, he was a sculptor. And he, uh, he had property that ran right down to the Bronx River. See, in those days before the, the advice of the commission, you could have waterfront property. In fact, there was even little uh, uh, French restaurants with overhanging balconies right up at Gun Hill Road. Well, so he put it on his property, and uh, uh, one night, or one day, he was sitting around, and, uh, oh, he had a little footbridge that went over from one side of his property over to the far side where there was a, a, a tapestry factory at Gun Hill Road. And uh, so uh, he got talking to the other two men, and they had a few bottles of wine or something. They decided to take the statue and put it right in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the bridge on one of the center piling. And they did that and on the back they, they, they carved the initial, uh, carved the number 1898. That's when it was put there. Well, uh, this man, I... Lazari. Uh, Lazari, that's the man, yeah, Lazari. Uh, Mr. Lazari got tired of the people using that bridge as a shortcut to go back and forth to... Uh, the factory, so he dismantled the bridge. It was his bridge, but he left to set the post there with the with the um, uh, the soldier on top, and it stayed that way for years. And uh, every St. Patrick's Day, somebody used to go up the night before and paint it green, and uh, it was just one of those neighborhood things. I guess you'd call it vandalism in a way. But anyway, uh, it stayed up there, and then when uh, uh, the Vance um, Parkway Commission came into being, they condemned all this waterfront property, uh, riverside property, and uh, but they left this statue there. And uh, uh, about, uh, all back in the 1920s or so, there was a very severe winter, and the ice flows coming down tipped, tipped, tipped the, uh, uh, the statue over. And it was lying there for practically a whole year, and then finally the, uh, they carted it away. Well, we had a man named, named uh, Bird Sack, and he was like a bulldog. Uh, he got on a trail or something, he never let up. And he just haunted the city departments until they finally found out it was in a, the statue was in a, uh, a warehouse. So he went down and he made such a, I would say, I can say, he made a pesto himself <laughs> that they agreed to turn it over to the historical society. And not only that, they also agreed to fix the visor and the boot, just to get rid of this guy. <laughs> and uh, that's happened. And uh, so uh, it's, it was brought up, oh, by that time the, uh, the parks department didn't want it in the, the river any longer, and they said uh, you'd have to take it. So we have it on the lawn on Bainbridge Avenue. So the only thing I told them is don't forget, have it facing south. They said, why? I said, well, the northern statues the northern soldiers always face south, and if you go down south, you'll notice that the Confederate soldiers face north. And they thought I was kidding, but that's true. It's one of the things. So it's one of our one of our little artifacts we have. So uh, Lazari is the name. I remember there was three of them all together. Uh, the other part, one man had an Irish name, Patty something, and then Lazari. Uh, uh, if you get some books on the Bronx Bar history, they give you the whole thing on it. Yeah. The Jumel Mansion? Uh, that's that is not 